uh, you said very, very clearly that you can't defend why that building with, uh, could not, uh, with the shooter on top of it uh, was not better covered. You were very clear, you cannot defend that. So my question to you is, I, my understanding is that there's a detailed uh, site survey that is done prior to an event to identify potential threat points. So talk to me about that site survey. I'm sure you've had a chance to look at it now after action. And how did that site survey get approved when it was so clear that that was a major threat from that building? Thank you, Senator. So uh, our Pittsburgh field office did the advance. During that advance, not only were they discussing uh, amongst themselves about mitigating the line of sight, but also they were discussing with other agencies that were supporting it. Uh, our counter snipers met with their counterparts uh, the, the team lead and team lead uh, met, they walked the site, they identified the AGR building. Uh, and if I may, Senator, if I could point out something uh, right now, if I may, and we will place this for the record, uh, but this is uh, the point of view. This is from the second floor of the AGR building. This point of view is the point of view where the counter sniper team locally was posted. The gold arrow indicates where the shooter fired from. Looking left, why was the assailant not seen? When we were told that building was gonna be covered, that there had been a face-to-face -face that afternoon that our team leads met. This was the view. Let me show you another view, Senator. B. This view is a reenactment by one of my agents. Laying flat, there was a five inch rise on the middle of that roof. The assailant would have had to present his bore over that to get his shot off. The view underneath reflects the perspective that he would have had. Again, I call your attention back to the first exhibit if they'd have looked left. Give me C. This is what our counter sniper team saw. Shooter, no elbows. You barely make out the crown of his head. Below it, the assailant up prone. And let me just tell you, our counter sniper, this individual, I know him. I consider him a friend. He has covered me operationally in conflict zones. And when I did my time on the president's detail, he exemplifies the courage, the skill, and the ability to respond under great stress in such short time to neutralize the threat and prevent further loss of life. Getting back to your question, Senator, these were discussions that were had between the Pittsburgh field office, the local counterparts, and everyone supporting that visit that day. And that's why when I laid in that position, I could not and I will not and I cannot understand why there was not better coverage or at least somebody looking at that roof line when that's where they were posted. Director Rowe, the, the Secret Service, state and local law enforcement uh, were on multiple communication channels, is my understanding, during that time. And as a result, local law enforcement was only able to call in to a state command center uh, that was then relayed from the Secret Service. Uh, this seemed to be a, a recurring uh, issue in emergency situations uh, that we're finding with the federal government that there's not a seamless way to communicate, particularly if you're relying on local law enforcement to deal with what was clearly a major, major vulnerability. Uh, local law enforcement in Butler told my staff that, uh, the, that they had no way of communicating directly with the Secret Service. 
And if I listen to uh, Mr. Bates saying there was about a 30 seconds uh, between when the local law enforcement uh, reported that there was a man on the roof with a gun, uh, 30 seconds, uh, if it's communicated directly to a counter sniper team, would that be enough time to react prior to the firing of those shots? Senator, if we'd had that information, they would have been able to address it more quickly. It appears that that information uh, was stuck or siloed in that state and local channel. I will tell you though that there were, um, uh, our tactical elements did have, not only did they have embeds from Butler County ESU with them, uh, but they also had uh, radios on the tactical net. Um, it, it is troubling to me that we did not get that information as quickly as we should have. Uh, we didn't know that there was this incident going on, uh, and the only thing we had was that locals were working an issue at the three o'clock, which would have been the former president's right-hand side, which is where the shot came. Nothing about man on the roof, nothing about man with a gun, none of that information ever made it over our net. So that will change? Yes, sir, we are working right now to figure out the interoperability and also make sure that we do have access to those channels, whether through a counterpart system or some other means. Very good. Ranking Member Paul, I recognize for your questions. 